back. Thank you for joining us. We've been uh, off for a pit stop, two-week hiatus. And coming up after uh, our next interview, to give us a perspective on the destabilization in the Middle East, we're going to premiere the hour-plus exclusive interview with the founder of the Smashing Pumpkins, Billy Corrigan, that we shot about a week and a half ago here at this table. So that's uh, coming up here in about 15 minutes or so, so please stay with us. First off, Syrian Girl has uh, been quite a sensation uh, on the Internet. She's not like the people that have been caught working for the West who are from England and don't really live in Syria, who've been caught, uh, you know, Syrian Danny and others doing fake machine gun fire and claiming there's dead bodies all around them. No, uh, she doesn't even claim to be in Syria. She's in an undisclosed location, but of course, uh, her family is from Syria. In fact, uh, her family comes from the last ruling class uh, family there, so she doesn't even really like Assad. So I thought I would get her on uh, to talk about that and then look at Al-Qaeda on record being called freedom fighters and protesters blowing up military and police bases uh, a few weeks ago, and the protesters now for six months that have been shooting and killing people uh, that Anderson Cooper and others uh, are praising. So we're going to talk about that. Angelina Jolie, when she visited, uh, and more with Syrian Girl joining us from an undisclosed location. Syrian Girl, thank you for coming on with us. My pleasure. Let's get a little bit into yourself and, you know, as a Syrian, what your overall view, what your family's view is, if you can tell us on what's happening there, the different uh, forces that are involved. So when I was growing up, um, I was always given a very bad impression of the Syrian government, and I accepted this as the status quo, when obviously now that I'm older, I realize that's not true. But the reason for this is my family is actually from the previous bourgeois uh, ruling class and was deposed from power during the Ba'athist coup. My grandfather was in government and on, also on my mother's side, um, we had some land that was confiscated and whatnot, but um, that's okay, I guess. Um, basically, even in my own family, there's been some issues with the government where um, people have gone to prison and things like that. So I'm not pro-government. Um, I'm actually not pro very many governments in the entire world. I'm hard pressed to find one government that I find myself in agreement with. And I'm quite cynical in this view. I feel that, um, you know, the state exists for the state alone. So I'm also suspicious of any new government that might ever arise. I, I just feel like um, whoever wins, the government always wins. So uh, I, I understand completely where um, people who have issues with the government are coming from. But on the, on the same hand, I also understand why there's a lot of support for the government. Education is free, healthcare is free in Syria, there's no um, foreign debt, um, religions live amongst each other peacefully. So I, I see where both camps are coming from. On, but I have to, at this point in Syria, I'm, because you know Syria is not some island that is uh, separated from the rest of the world. Actually, Syria is very different to the, to the rest of the countries. We are surrounded by our, our enemies from every side of the border. So you can't just apply you, you know, all, all other considerations that other countries might have, you know, revolutions, and not consider where Syria is and who would benefit from it and who is causing it. And for Syria, you know, we need to have more security than other people. It's not like we don't have a reason for it or we have to invent a reason for it. We actually do have um, legitimate reasons to be suspicious. Um, so at this time, I just don't feel that, at, at any time, I don't feel that we should concern the world with our internal issues. You know, Syria's internal issues is that Syria. So it's an issue of national sovereignty. But look, we know that whether it's Uganda or whether it's Libya, or whether it's Iraq, you can say these are bad leaders or good leaders. I mean, I mean, overall, obviously, I don't like big government authoritarian systems, so they're bad. 
but the West wants to come in and destabilize and wreck it and then put al-Qaeda in charge. And so when you've got those two choices there, it's obvious. The West says they want to bring freedom to these places, but they don't uh, do that. Uh, and, of course, you, you were on my show a month ago talking about it being al-Qaeda. That's in our news. It's being funded by the West. The same groups they used to topple Gaddafi, now engaged in black genocide there. That's in the news, but a minor footnote. What about a few weeks ago, these giant blasts blowing up police headquarters, intelligence headquarters, and our media basically called it a protest. So, oh, the sweet little protesters are blowing up buildings. Uh, and this has been going on now for more than six months. I mean, it's, it's just so ridiculous to watch Anderson Cooper uh, all breathless, hyperventilating uh, up there about how he wants to. And, 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 and of course, you know, the, these fake reporters they've had that, that have been caught lying. What do you think of that? I think it's been happening since the very beginning, but only now have they... Uh has the media in the West, I mean, not all media, obviously, but uh, only now is, is it really coming to light. You know, they've been faking videos. I've got evidence of it, um, a lot, you know, in French channels, in my own channel, um, of them faking things from the start. But now um, it seems that they are actually, well, not now, you know, that they've been collaborating with these um, insurgents. And now Anderson Cooper, he... Um, was interviewing this guy called Danny, as you know, and um, your viewers would probably know that he, this Danny was caught faking an, an interview saying that he was under bombardment when really he was, uh, you know, in complete safety and he was actually faking sounds of shelling. And now Anderson Cooper um, tried to distance himself from Danny and saying, oh, you know, poor CNN, it hasn't been allowed into Syria and hence it has to rely on these uh, dubious sources. Well, actually, CNN was allowed into Syria, and this was at the time of the oil uh, refinery fire in Homs. And there was a video that was found um, that was set up by these insurgents facing the direction of the oil refinery fire 16 hours previous to the actual um, explosion that blew it up. And actually on this very same video, the voices of CNN journalists, uh, Arwa Damon, I think her name is, and um, some of her colleagues were heard on this video. So n not only were they, um, take, not only are they so skewed and faking interviews, they're actually collaborating with people who are committing terrorist uh, uh, bombings and We'd, I can't say how far this collaboration goes, but obviously they knew what was going to happen because they, they were there, you know, with, with the camera. So um, this is not, like, new. If you remember in Libya, there was one CNN... I'm, actually, I'm, I have to correct myself. It may not have been CNN. But there was one Western journalist who on her Twitter tweeted that she helped NATO that day because she directed them to a position um, of war to airstrike. So we're not really dealing with independent media here. We're dealing with enemy media. And some of these so-called media are spies. I know that um, in Syria, in the same team that Arwa Damon was with, we had uh, former SAS agents. So these guys are, um, I think it's the Syrian government is actually right in being suspicious of the foreign media. And I'm actually, you know, given their history, of supporting uh, militarily the um, invasions and whatnot, that um, they should be suspicious of the Western media. Sure, and so, just to be clear here, the United States has been hijacked by these big mega banks on record. The Economist, Financial Times of London, they brag, oh, Goldman Sachs has conquered Europe. So it's not like my country and even Israel or Australia or England want to attack Syria. No, it's just our name on it. The big mega oligarch banks are using our countries in NATO to go after your nation and selling us that it's humanitarian because, you know, Saddam threw babies out of incubators. Turns out that wasn't true or Saddam has WMDs or Gaddafi's got rape gangs out fueled by uh, Viagra. None of that was true. Anderson Cooper has them all on with classic bestial war propaganda. But Anderson Cooper is not an American. 
You know, Anderson Cooper is a globalist operative, so I want to be clear. It's not that, oh, I'm siding against America with Syria. I don't like Assad, just like your family got run out of there by Assad and locked up. The point is they're not trying to go in and throw Assad out to bring some type of freedom, but to loot the region and put al-Qaeda in charge, who've said they're going to run out the Muslim minority groups and the Christians. So, it, I mean, they're going to put al-Qaeda in there. That's on record to wreck the place when it's an industrialized civilization. And it's the same thing with Iran. And it's Saudi Arabia, that corrupt, not the people of Saudi Arabia, but that a corrupt elite who is backed by the British Empire doing all of this. Israel's involved, not the Israeli people. Per, I mean, 70 plus percent don't want to attack Iran and Israel. But our media acts like Americans are traitors if we don't want to attack uh, Iran. Well, the majority of Israelis don't. This is madness by the ruling class that wants all these wars and is overthrowing all these countries by proxy to loot them. Uh, do you agree with those statements, or is there any tidbits you want to add to? You disagree? I absolutely agree with the majority. I might add a few tidbits. I want to uh, definitely uh, confirm and agree that, um, you know, our war, our fight is everybody's fight. You know, we're all fighting these bands. We're all fighting this ruling elite that happens to be crazy because um, we can see that they're crazy by the fact that they follow some strange religions and seem to want to um, put symbolism everywhere in the crimes that they commit. And, you know, it's not, it's not about um, uh, being behind Amer Syria um, and against America, no. It's about stopping um, the, the potential of a third world war. And the only people who are going to suffer are us, you know, all of us, people, civilians, um, soldiers, our, our families. So, you know, I totally agree. Our fight is, is your fight and your fight is our fight. So um, I also I want to put out also with Israel, you know, I have um, no hatred towards any different people. And for me, the, the perfect solution would be to go back to the way things were, where Jews and Muslims and Christians were living in the, the old cities and in Syria, and th we had no problem whatsoever. And for me, you know, a one-state solution would be ideal, but that, that's a very, very long story. I, I don't want to get into that. But um, with Assad specifically, and you said also mentioned Saddam Hussein, they always try to create a caricature of like this evil boogeyman, made, you know, Osama bin Laden, Hitler, and so forth and so forth, as the film Connie 2012 did, Connie, another one. But with Assad, it's, it's a little bit, um, it doesn't quite mesh very well because even though the government of Syria might be very hard, Bashar Assad himself is, is actually quite soft. You know, he never actually intended to um, become president. He was uh, an ophthalmologist. They don't even deny that he was trying to reform. The bureaucracy has been blocking him, correct? No, I, I don't think so. Well, actually, in before pre-2008, they had him come to France. They, ha they had him, you know, like... Uh, they were they were preening and prop, uh, trying to buy him away from Iran, basically, in so many words. And a part of that was, I guess, Angelina Jolie um, coming to Syria, and you know, all these articles coming out like, oh, you know, these dictators are actually very mild, blah blah blah. But at the, at the end of the day, there was no way that Syria or even Bashar was going to side with our enemies, uh, these, you know, owned governments uh, in Europe against our ally Iran. So um, from that point on, they realized, well, that there's only so far that these reforms go, you know, he's not going to introduce a central bank, etc. So um, I guess from that day on, he was enemy number one. Well, before we went live here in the interview, you said that you wanted to bring up Angelina Jolie and the, you know, the points I'd made about her. Um, 
I mean, what's your view on what she's doing, calling for the invasion of Libya? She's got to feel good about the black genocide there and the 40-plus thousand dead. Uh, she's calling for the invasion of your country and the humanitarian bombing and the al-Qaeda attacks that she says are peaceful and loving. Um, Obama's saying he'll launch wars, the congressional approval now that he takes orders from NATO and the U.N. Uh, what do you think of her in Coney 2012? Just all of it. The repackaging war now as loving and liberal, and uh, you're a traitor if you're not for destroying countries. Well, they've always uh, said war is peace, haven't they? So with Anthony and Jolie, I was in Syria when she was there, and I should have been more suspicious when she was there. I mean, I, at, the, at the time, I actually didn't realize what she was. I thought, you know, she's just some just some, some actress. So I was, like, vaguely interested, oh, this might be good for tourism, you know. But then I heard that at that time that... She, this might have been just a rumor, but that she was thinking about adopting a Syrian child. And actually, I remember feeling such um, rage at this thought because uh, it's, it's kind of a humiliation, I think. I, I now realize how other uh, countries might feel. You know, no, it's like war loot. It's like war booty. And as long as they've taken one of your children, then it's okay to carpet bomb you and overrun you with Al-Qaeda. So it's all like, look, I have a child I'm loving. It's a totally sick joke with her. In fact, we found she likes to adopt a child from any place she's later going to call for their destruction. So it's like a cute little joke. Well, luckily, um, either she wasn't allowed to take one or, um, I don't, or it was a rumor, rumor all along. I'm betting it was the former. But um, she's definitely, as, as you said, I completely agree with what you said about her. And I feel like she's more than just a useful idiot. And she also appeared in the Coney 2012 film saying, oh, you know, let's, let's find Coney. Like, it's so, he's so evil, blah, blah, blah. And I actually have a, a, a long commentary on my YouTube channel about Coney 2012. And I don't want to repeat everything, but it's so um, clearly a, a very, very powerful piece of propaganda, but so clearly... A, you know, a psychological operation to try to get um, war to happen in Uganda. So um, I actually feel that it kind of imploded. It's it's very strange, you know. Um, it, it, there was this huge fanfare, and, and now it's 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 also all the intellectual people are against it. That are are the voices that are being heard? So um, you know, maybe it's a plus in the end. Well, the whole Coney 2012 thing, George Soros connected, State Department connected, all of it. I mean, this guy hadn't been seen in years, five, six years. That's the telltale sign. They just pick a boogeyman where he's there, and then they pass, tried to pass a resolution in Congress saying, we'll attack any country we want uh, on the name of Coney in Africa. I mean, it's so transparent, but they get all these trendies hopping around going, it's liberal, it's liberal. I mean, how they've gotten normally liberal anti-war people now to be like vicious pro-war piranhas, uh, all because Obama's in. So you give him the peace prize, you have him launch all these wars and call it peace. I mean, it is sick. It's so ironic because the movie itself is discussing how terrible it is to use child soldiers, where they have um, images of all of these teenagers in T-shirts with machine guns on their shirts, with a big banner down the bottom that says, we will fight. So it's, it's, it's a complete and utter um, in-your-face, hypocrisy, warmongering. Um, I don't know what else to say about it. Uh, I guess um, the powers that be, you know, they worked hard on that one. But I don't know how far it's taken them. Uh, Osama bin Laden was a, uh, one of those boogeyman that was everywhere. They had a minion as well, Zarqawi, which they, they used in Iraq. And so many Iraqis were saying, uh, actually, we've never seen him, we've never heard of him. He's just another WMD. But America sure seems to have, know where he is at all times. And it's crazy how many uh, stories come out of him being killed somewhere or lost a leg. It just shows you that these people, whether they existed in one point or not, the creation, the character that they have of them is just a tool to um, ha create war, to uh, gain resources. And in, in the case of Africa, it's just to push China out of the way so they can get their own oil pipelines through. 
So um, that's that's that about Coney, I guess. Syrian girl, I want to raise the Al-Qaeda attacks. I already mentioned those, but, but again, watching the rebels who've been attacking, I don't know, six, eight months, however long it's been now, from the beginning shooting and killing people, and then our controlled media that works for the big banks that have taken over America here in my uh, conquered nation, they just all happily go along with the fact that they are implying that military attacks are protesting. And then now we see Al Qaeda blowing things up. Um, what's your view on that? And and where do you see this whole situation going in Syria now that Russian ships are there and Russian troops have been deployed to the area? Well, um, on the Russian troops, I think uh, well the ships have been there since the beginning of the year, and they came um, because actually the ships, French and Canadian ships from Libya had stayed in the Mediterranean, waiting for a chance to attack um, Syria. And, you know, I've heard people say that, oh, NATO hasn't attacked Syria because it doesn't have oil. Actually, you know, they've been trying to attack Syria since day one, but they've had uh, Russia blocking them. And, you know, we welcome the ships in the port. The, the soldiers are not um, given free reign in Syria. I actually... Um, the report initially of the soldiers being there is unconfirmed. I think the first source was Depka, so I'm not sure, but I, I feel that if there are soldiers anywhere in Syria, they would just be guarding the um, Russian boats themselves in that locality. But um, I think that, uh, you know, I, I trust that our Russian allies would um, support us if if some crazy uh, war hawk just decides to uh, break resolution and attack. Um, back on to the bombings and the so-called uh, peaceful demonstrations in Syria. You know, yeah, okay, I think there's been death squads in Syria um, doing what they've done in South America. Uh, if you've ever seen the film um, with the Venezuelan President uh, Chavez, uh, the revolution will not be televised. You will see that actually the these outside forces were shooting at both protesters and police, tried to instigate something, and the protesters were anti-Chavez protesters. So uh, they, this is a formula that's been used over and over and over again. And there there are death squads in Syria, um, and there's snipers firing at people buying bread on the street. You know, just randomly at people mortar fire coming from nowhere, bombings, and yet we're supposed to believe this narrative that the, you know, only the government is just out killing everybody randomly for no reason whatsoever, and it's really evil, including protesters and uh, that are peaceful, and, you know, civilians. In reality, the protesters were very, very quickly armed from the start, you know, very, very, um, within a very short period of time, we saw uh, peaceful protesters and then armed, armed insurgency. So, um, well, that's how the Soviets in during the Cold War would do it a lot. They would come in in, in the next country they wanted to invade, and th th they would exploit the country they'd already taken over to send in rebels. They would call them protesters, have them rise up, and then have them invade, and then call for the Soviets to roll in backing them. And the Soviets would say, "Oh, we're backing a freedom revolution." So this whole proxy war thing is so criminal and, and again you can say what you want of the eye doctor Assad and and oh and the fact that the government of England then hacked their emails and released them and I noticed infowars.com was in there I saw that in the City Morning Herald uh, that uh, I guess it's Assad's father-in-law was like here Infowars seems to have it broken down look at this so it's also it shows that the Syrian government's probably not that sophisticated if they're having to figure out what's going on partially from Infowars.com uh, but I, I just don't want to see the Al-Qaeda flag even though I'm supposed to love Al-Qaeda as an American because Obama says so I don't want to see Al-Qaeda I know I'm unpatriotic taking over your country Thanks, we appreciate that, but um, we, yeah, we're not going to allow that to happen. That's what they want in the end, you know. They, I have uh, videos of these, uh, you know, parts of these insurgent forces, and by and large, you know, they have the same kind of Salafist Wahhabi ideology as Al-Qaeda, so 
Um, there, there's uh, videos of them holding up the Al Qaeda flag in, in multiple occasions. So it's it's not really anything to be denied. Um, and actually, a, half of them. I'm not gonna, maybe not half. I can't really say percentages and whatnot. I don't have statistics, but um, a large portion of them are actually from outside of Syria and. Even the Western media has reported this. Oh, yeah, no, no, no. In Libya, once they'd killed uh, Gaddafi, they were holding up signs saying, Syria, here we come. Damascus, here we come. I mean, it's, it's clear. And they met up in Turkey talking about how they were going to come there. And the, it, Turkey and Jordan are where these people are trained. And there's actually images of uh, either mercenaries or uh, special forces Westerners uh, with a British flag on their side and very expensive Kevlar and American weapons. There's, we have images of them training these people in how to create bombs. So yeah, you mentioned George Soros and his, you know, humanitarian NGOs. Well, there's actually NGOs out there and they have websites and um, Syria has captured shipments of them of their uh, stuff to these insurgents and they include. Uh, walkie-talkies, and they've captured so many shipments of uh, weapons, including Israeli weapons. Um, so in the media, you hear things like, oh, the U.S. is discussing whether or not it will arm the insurgency. Actually, it's been armed since the beginning. Well, that's right. They the admit state. in Jordan, this is even been in the BBC and even Associated Press, there's U.S. troops right on the border at these camps arming them and then spilling them in and then little CIA Anderson Cooper who admits he's CIA gets up and goes, I'm liberal, oh, help everybody, oh, help them. I mean, it's so, people think if somebody has a limp wrist that war is suddenly trendy. And that's all a camouflage with Anderson Cooper, that whole I'm a sweetie cake act. Oh, we've really got to help the protesters. I mean, it is so sick. Well, Syrian girl, we even put your Twitter up on screen if folks want to contact you. From what I've seen, though, it looks like the tide is starting to turn against this Western-backed Al-Qaeda revolution uh, and that things uh, are really starting to reverse. Is that fair to say from your contacts in Syria? I definitely, definitely agree. Um, I'm still cautious of what might be uh, put against Syria next. I, I feel like they want to start creating a civil war. So, you know, the way that they create a civil war is they continuously bomb uh, one side and then the other until even, you know, one person is idiotic enough to think, oh, actually, I was bombed by the other side. And that's all it takes to turn a fake civil war into a real civil war. So I feel this is their next step in Syria. This is what they're going to try to do. But I feel, you know, we're not going to go for it. We've already, um, Syria's already basically defeated the insurgency, the FSA. It's just these um, cells of, uh, you know, bomb makers that it now has to Well, that's like, that's like six years ago it was even in the British news. They caught SAS dressed up like Wahhabists driving around shooting Shiites and Shiite police trying to get a civil war going in Basra. It's full spectrum dominance. If you're going to be somewhere, you've got to be able to say there's the war. And so the, the, the bankers fund the terrorists and fund the insurrection as a pretext to be there. And now they've said they're going to start bombing um, uh, Damascus, and then the government's got to clamp down to stop that, and then they can say, oh, look, the government's authoritarian. This is pure manipulation, uh, and uh, we'll continue to track it and watch it from here. Uh, be safe. Syrian girl, thank you so much for spending time with us. If I may make one last sentence, sure. I just want to say that um, there's a lot of talk in Syria that the emails, uh, the so-called Assad emails are not really his, and um, the names even on the email are not true. I just wanted to just say that because otherwise I'll regret not saying it. Oh, that's probably so the case. That, uh, that's probably the case. They probably put info wars in there to, you know, go after us. I know they've done similar things to us in the past. Uh, who knows? I just saw that in the City Morning Herald. I don't know if you saw it a few weeks ago. And it was like, you know, infowars.com and the emails. Uh, I mean, it wouldn't be the first time the establishment's uh, done stuff like that. Well, listen, thank you so much for spending time with us. Thank you so much for having me. Thank you. Well, I was only going to go for about 15 minutes, but wow, uh, amazing in-depth interview, not sound bites there uh, with the lady that goes for safety by Syrian girl.
And she comes from one of the former ruling class families who didn't actually like uh, Assad's father. So there you go. But they don't want to see their country bombed and with all those love bombs that Obama likes to drop that Hillary's calling for, carpet bombing the country to, to, to protect the protesters, uh, the al-Qaeda. And again, if you don't like the fact that I don't like al-Qaeda, I don't care. I'm not for al-Qaeda. And I know nowadays in America that scene is extremist, that scene is bad. I don't want to ship guns to the Mexican drug lords like the White House does. I don't want to fund al-Qaeda. I just want freedom. I'm not for cancer viruses and the vaccines. I'm a bad guy. I'm an extremist. I want freedom. I don't want to devalue the dollar. I'm a bad guy again. I'm announcing our biggest contest ever. And we're looking for people who love freedom and who want to be all in in the resistance to tyrants. So you say you want to fight the new world order. Why, if you were on the radio, if you were Alex Jones, you'd really kick some globalist ass. Well, here's your chance. We're hiring not one, but two new reporters whose reports are going to be on the radio, whose reports are going to be on the nightly news, who will even anchor the show. If you're ready, here's your chance to step into my shoes and I hope you surpass what I've done. Two winners, $10,000 in prizes, and a shot to be a reporter inside the InfoWars.com command center. We're looking to hire one male reporter and one female reporter. And when you win, you win $5,000. Your video gets seen by hundreds of thousands, if not millions of people on YouTube, and you get put into the very front of the running to be hired as a reporter slash anchor right here in our operation. Do you have what it takes to be the next Info Warrior? The rules are posted below me here and at InfoWars.com. This is a big deal. You know, the globalists are expanding their global empire, but at the same time, the people are waking up all over the world. We've expanded our operations in the last year. We've added the nightly news five nights a week. We're making more special reports. We're reaching 15 million people every week. In a year, I want that to be 30 million. This is your chance to join the team. I want to see what you can do. But a big hint is this. Can your news piece make the news? Does it get people's attention? Does it educate people? Does it open minds? That's more important than being beautiful or speaking with perfect eloquence as an orator. All of that is important. But we're looking for people that have that magic spark, that fire of liberty in their heart. Because I want you to join our team. I want to give you a launch pad so you can really take off and engage the globalist. And if this works, we'll have contests all the time. And we'll continue to build this operation. I'm involved in a talent search, looking for people who have the fires of liberty burning in their hearts and their minds. You've got until April 30th to complete your news report, and then we'll announce the winners one week later. Are you going to join the info war? Do you have what it takes? It's up to you. All serious entries will be posted on InfoWars.com, so everybody wins. You're getting the message of liberty out, and that's what really matters. But in the final equation, it's not about showing Alex Jones what you got. It's about showing the world and the globalist that no army can stop an idea whose time has come. Join me in the info war. So you say you want to fight the info war. You say you want to go head up against the new world order. You can do a better job than Alex Jones. I know you can. And here's your chance to prove your mettle.